Hello friends and subscribers, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World here on YouTube. My name is Daniel Rosal and this is my tech corner of YouTube. So I'm going to be doing a few more videos about Homebox for those who have got their subscriptions on all notifications. You might want to turn off that feature or go back to suggested videos if you're not interested in this Homebox uh, open source home inventory software. But I will be doing some videos about it. It's a great little piece of gear. It's available as a Docker image and you can host it locally on a Synology or you can also host it wherever you can host Docker images. So today I want to be looking at the uh, export functionality and I want to add a few words about it. So firstly, there is also an import functionality, which I will uh, talk about in a separate video. This will import, uh, you want to give it a CSV format, a comma separated value. The export actually gives you a TSV instead of a CSV. If like me, you hadn't heard of TSV, it just stands for tab separated values as opposed to comma separated, but it's basically the same same idea. You can import it into any spreadsheet program and play around with the data. Uh, there's also a bill of material generator. Uh, my wife is actually an architect and she for sure knows a lot about BOMs. Uh, I don't use it myself, but uh, if you need to, to do that, you can generate a BOM as well for whatever reason you need to. So I'm going to look just at the simple export uh, inventory feature. You click this button and in a second, you'll have a TSV file downloaded. And I've just uh, open this up in a Google Sheet and I'm going to actually just zoom in a bit because I know something is wrong with my OBS uh, that the text reads like really, really small. So I'm just going to try compensate for that by making it a bit bigger. So the first thing uh, that you can do, I want to point out, whatever whether you're using something like Excel or Google Sheets, you can add this nice little uh, auto filter like I've done here. And this actually makes it very helpful, like take the archived ones you can easily filter out values which have an archive of t a value of true using this feature. Now, let me just run you through uh, what they have on offer. I'm just going to make some of the columns bigger so they can be easily seen in this video. So um, column B here is the location and the way this is formatted in the export is it's going to be your, uh, your primary location, a forward slash, and then your secondary location, uh, which is... Uh, Good, I have some stuff nested into three locations, like in, in my home office, I have a couple of uh, cabinet storage units as locations. And I don't know if the three of them will be there, but certainly you can do up to two levels. You can do two levels deep. I decided I won't be lazy. I, look, I looked through the rest of my inventory and I couldn't see anything with three levels. So I guess if you have stuff nested at three levels or more, it's gonna skip the intermediate level and you're just gonna get the first level, then the final level. Um, then in uh, column D here, you have the asset ID and the spreadsheet or the export is ordered uh, sequentially, uh, which is very useful. Um, as I mentioned at the start here in column E, you have a true false flag for the archived value, which is hp.archived. So I haven't done, I haven't actually archived stuff yet, but if you did archive stuff from your system, like you gave some stuff away or you sold some stuff or you ran out of a perishable and you there is a functionality for archiving in the system and if uh, items are archived they will appear in the export but they will have the uh, the hp archived value of true and again this is where doing a simple um a simple uh, i forget what this formula is called the auto lookup or the uh, auto filter auto filter on Google Sheets is very handy because you can just take off the ones that are marked true and that'll hide them from uh, from the view in your spreadsheet. Then you have the name of the item, uh, the, the asset name, you have the quantity and you have the description. Again, just a text field and you can of course make this more presentable by playing around with the formatting. Um, you then also have any, I mean, basically everything that you enter gets exported, including all the, the purchasing information uh, like the vendor name, the purchasing date, uh, the and if you're using this, I did try in open office and something weird happened with uh, some of the fields, like they got this uh, kind of nonsense date. In other words, if I didn't have a date, they entered one in that didn't make sense. Uh, but most of them, uh, most of them don't have that. So I guess these are ones I just kind of entered wrong or something weird went on here at least. Uh, the model number, the serial number, I've just redacted those for uh, for data protection purposes, but the serial numbers came through there just fine. Uh, warranty information, 
and basically everything is is the short answer but there's also i just wanted to point out as well if you look at uh, z column z here it's field ip address this is actually a custom field i added for uh for some of the ip stuff like uh printers on my network the nas that kind of stuff there isn't a field uh, for that by default it would be probably a good one to have so i created a custom field and just to point out that the custom fields you create will get logged and if I scroll down to where my printer is in the system uh there we go uh row 35 you can see the IP address I logged was created for there and I have another custom field here under AD which is the I added one for the product URL like the spec sheets so that's basically it. you essentially get everything you put in out and I think this is great in fact I pretty much refuse to use any software uh, whether it's self -ho self-hosted or cloud-hosted that does not let you export your own data that's a deal breaker for me and uh, this export functionality is good and can certainly be useful for a variety of uh, of use cases as I said moving an insurance spread to mind exporting to a new software um, is a big one so that there isn't vendor lock and there's probably a lot more as well thanks for watching this video today hope it was helpful and until the next one thanks for watching